Okay. Um, very good afternoon. My name is Helmut Lademann, and I'm the electrochemical uh, expert uh, of a company that most probably uh, not many of you will know in that uh, industry. And I'm also responsible for the German uh, subsidiary. Um, what is the added value of AI-powered condition monitoring of water electrolysis in real time? It is the only way to determine in real time the electrolyzer performance for predictive and preventive maintenance, for load distribution management, and for a safe electrolyzer startup. And all that is essential to make sure that a water electrolysis plant, oops, that a water electrolysis plant is still healthy when after four or sometimes even more years in operation, the investment should finally start to make profit. But at first, who is R2? Our customers say that we are the experts in large-scale electrolyzer operation and optimization. Who are these customers? You can see them there on the slide. That's the who is who in the electrochemical industry, which is today the chloralkali industry. The chloralkali industry has an installed capacity of 25 gigawatt worldwide. And what are we doing for that industry? Typically, a chloralkali or hydrogen producer buys an electrochemical plant from an engineering company, and the electrolyzer comes as part of that package. Engineering companies, as you know, they are most profitable when they buy a tank, a pump, an electrolyzer cheap, and when they sell the package for a significantly higher price. Therefore, typically, electrolyzers are equipped with the lowest possible safety standards and no intelligence. It's like a car without a safety belt and without a board computer. And that was the opportunity of, for R2 to become worldwide the market leader in supporting the producer as an independent third party with unique patented hardware, software, and analysis services to make the, the electrolysis technology that you have um, chosen safe and to operate it as profitable as possible. When the engineering companies and the electrolyzer supplier are gone because they are working on their next project, we stay, analyze, troubleshoot, optimize, manage maintenance programs, and so on. And we do that, that as you can see on this slide, since 1989. Our headquarters is in Montreal, Canada, and since 2008, we have a subsidiary in Cologne in Germany. In 2020, our owner retired, and Asai Kasai bought our shares. Who is Asai Kasai? Asai Kasai is the one-stop supplier, the number one in chloralkali, means the number, the number one in today's biggest electrochemical business. And Asai Kasai is also, since 2020, active in water electrolysis. Asai Kasai understands to explain to the end user the added value of bundling the electrolyzer with our products and services from day one. But we are still an independent group company. We can still service all other electrolyzer manufacturer and producer, because as you can see on the slide, some of them are competitors of Asai Kasai. To all our customers, we have a very close relationship. They share their data with us. Therefore, we have worldwide the largest electrolysis database from more than 30 years of condition monitoring of, meanwhile, more than 100,000 cells from all technology providers. We have more than 90 installations in 25 countries on all continents. And this data are the key to success. So we can develop and customize all products precisely to our customers' needs. Of course, it all starts with safety first. And there we are offering a patented seal 2 certified safety instrumented system and its unique hardware, software, and data history. 
But we are doing much more we, meanwhile. We do AI-powered condition monitoring so that already potentially harmful ways of operation are alarmed. If the operator is not working according to the operating manual, even if it is not actually harmful, you are already getting an alarm. We are offering plant health checks, historical data analysis on demand, regular cell performance analysis for performance-based cell maintenance, as well as even a cloud infrastructure for information exchange between the plant, the tech supplier, service providers, and repair shops. Okay, let's now go a little bit into the details. What is the end-of-life criteria for an electrolyzer? It is not an increased electrolyzer voltage or a little bit higher power consumption because practically it doesn't pay back to refurbish a cell or a stack because of some percent higher power consumption. The explosion risk is the knockout criteria. And in a bipolar water electrolyzer, it is typically an individual cell that overheats, like in this case, because the hundreds of cells in a stack are not aging the same. We call such a cell the black sheep of the electrolyzer. This explosion at Laporte in 1975 was the first incident with a fatality that was very detailed, documented, and it was published. And that explains the dominating risks of bipolar water electrolysis. The current goes from one end of the electrolyzer to the other end, regardless if an individual cell has a problem. The current cannot bypass the cell via its neighbors, as for example, in a monopolar design. Therefore, the cell simply overheats, the heat destroys the separator or the membrane. The gas collectors are then short-circuited and an explosive gas mixture is traveling to equipment with higher holdup. The diluting and phlegmatizing effect of the water vapor condenses more and more and as the gas is cooling down. So finally, there is an ignition source and an explosion. So how to avoid that? A safety instrumented system is required that stops the power supply and with that the gas production within a second. So then you can have minimum a small explosion inside the cell. So what are the different causes for hydrogen and oxygen mixing? The cell can be too hot. There can be a short circuit. There can be a mechanical damage of the separator by a differential pressure excursion. There can be separator degradation by age, uh, like the, the well-known PEM thinning. How to detect all the different causes for hydrogen and oxygen mixing? They all have one in common. Either the cell voltage increases or it decreases. The effect is very small. You cannot detect it when you have only the stack voltage, but you can detect it with, uh, with a precise single cell voltage sensor. And this single cell voltage based electrolyzer protection system, where you have in real time modulated upper and lower boundaries, depending on the current and the behavior of the neighbor cells, that's the solution and the intellectual property of R2. And it is meanwhile state of the art for bipolar electrolysis. And if you want to have a risk reduction according to SEAL 2, safety integrity level 2, it's the only way to reach the target, which means you catch minimum 99 out of 100 incidents. To prevent false positive low voltage detection from a bad connection between cell and voltage measurement hardware, it's very important to have self-validation. So this is inbuilt. We are calculating the sum of individual cell voltages we compare with the group voltage, because otherwise there, there will be no acceptance to install in a plant a low voltage trip. So you need this unique feature to avoid any false trips, because in a gigawatt factory, if you use the single cell voltage, you have 10,000s of copper connections between an AD converter and the cell. So you should not trip if there is only a loose cable. 
But of course, stopping an electrolyzer out of the blue is not state of the art anymore. If you have a short circuit, okay, that happens so fast you can do nothing. But many other performance losses are predictable, they take time. And same as for safety, you can use the single cell voltage, that's the key. In a bipolar water electrolyzer, the worst individual cell determines the end of electrolyzer life and not the electrolyzer voltage. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So the electrolyzer with the fastest increase of an individual cell needs to be maintained next. Predictive maintenance requires prediction of the aging of the black sheep and then to replace it on time as you can see it with this technology. And that's where AI-powered condition monitoring enters into the game. Where is the black sheep in this electrolyzer? You see, after a certain time in operation, all the cells in an electrolyzer, they have different voltages. Is it this one that has the highest voltage? No, it is also not this one, because they have high voltage, but the voltage is stable. It is this one, because there, a fast aging has started. So that means if you only have the cell voltage, you can do nothing. What is required? The solution is what we call residuals, generated by a software that we call EMOS Early Detection Engine. The plant operator is looking at the difference between a predicted voltage coming from a neural net and the measured. If the difference is zero, all good. The neural net is built during the startup, so you have automatic neural net training during startup. And then you can see an alarm whenever a cell turns into a black sheep like this one. Looking at the trends, it's even more impressive. Inside all the cell voltages, the black sheep is hidden. You see at the bottom the current and then all the cell voltage trends of one electrolyzer. There is a voltage increase. With the residuals, so difference between measured and predicted, you can see it right away. If I remove some of the cells, some of the trends, you can also see it with the raw voltage, but you cannot put an alarm on it. With the strategy of the residuals, you can already alarm an increase of 10 to 20 millivolt of abnormal behavior. Please, concerning this, if you want more details uh, concerning AI-powered condition monitoring in real time during normal operation, please come to our stand. It's A56. Where else is AI-powered condition monitoring needed? When you turn on power with damaged membranes or separators, what will happen? Hydrogen and oxygen will mix right away. There is an established standard coming from the alkali industry. You apply a differential pressure on one side and you measure how fast it is decreasing. That gives you the electrolyzer leak rate. So if the differential pressure decrease is lower for the electrolyzer, then what is allowed for an individual cell, you cannot restart. The question then is, is this leak rate caused by one severely damaged membrane or by 10 minor damaged membranes? In one case, you can operate. In the other case, no. You have to refurbish the total electrolyzer. There is another um, established method to find out what is, what is the, the, the cause. Is it uh, multiple minor damages or one severe damage? But this test is very time and manpower consuming. For that, you need to have an electrolyzer where you can measure the individual gas flow after you have applied the differential pressure of the individual cell. So practically, that's the experience from the last 30 years in chloralkali. In most of the cases, after some years in operation, you have several cells with minor leakages and not one big leakage. So you can operate the electrolyzer, but only if you can prove that. 
So for today's electrochemical industry with very few shutdowns per year, this is a practiced method. But for a gigawatt water electrolysis plant, this will be a nightmare. Why? Imagine today's biggest electrochemical plant in Europe has about 30 electrolyzer. It consumes about 300 MW. And each electrolyzer is stopped maybe once a year. Neom project, 4,000 MW. These are totally new dimensions. We will see large plants with hundreds of stacks in the future, if all comes true. Large stacks with, with hundreds of cells, load distribution in real time, best electrolyzer at max load, worst electrolyzer at minimum load, and maintenance, at, it will become a weekly routine job. And electrolyzer start stop also will be a daily routine job. And that's the biggest challenge. Because you will have a very high number of electrolyzer starts and stops. Green energy powered electrochemical plants, they will have to stop an electrolyzer when the sun goes down and the wind slows down. So for electrolyzer and operation, you have state-of-the-art single voltage-based solutions for safety, condition monitoring, and performance prediction. But for fully automatic electrolyzer operation, an AI-powered leak rate and leak position analysis is needed to have a safe startup. And for that, again, please, if you want to know the details, come to A56 um, to find out about our unique solution for AI-powered uh, membrane and separator integrity testing so that you can do a safe startup. And by the way, that is the last missing building block to have a fully automatic smart electrolyzer. Thank you very much.